focus. It's the world's most prestigious powerboat racing series. The biggest, fastest, and most powerful machines on water, driven and throttled by a team of two, strapped into a fighter jet canopy, taking on the ocean and each other in a battle of guts, speed, and stamina. This is Class One. Five-ton catamarans with twin turbocharged 1,100 horsepower inboard V8 engines reaching speeds of up to 210 kilometers per hour in rough offshore conditions where the slightest mistake could be your last. Promoted by P1 Offshore and sanctioned by the World Powerboat Governing Body, the UIM, and the American Powerboat Association, the APBA, the Class 1 World Powerboat Championship is back on the calendar with multiple races announced in 2022. As past masters and legends of the sport are joined by young blood and fresh faces, all keen to bring the thrill and passion of Class 1 back to international audiences in a sport with a history that goes back nearly 70 years to the first World Championship in 1964. The 2022 season kicked off with thunder on Cocoa Beach in Florida's beautiful Space Coast. Just an hour's drive from Orlando, here you'll find a vibrant bar and restaurant scene, glorious sunshine, miles of sandy beaches, and of course, stunning ocean views. Multiple classes were raced, including the Superstock and Supercats in a powerboat celebration that went the entire weekend. parties, concerts, and some of the best powerboat racing on the planet. And the return of Class 1 was made possible by this man. So here we are in Cocoa Beach for the inaugural round of the 2022 UIM World Championship Class 1 event. This is the first international Class 1 event, literally since 2015. Um, it's been a long time coming. In 2020, we negotiated the rights. We have the rights now for the next 10 years. This is technically year zero, so actually there's going to be 11 years of Class 1 racing and I think many more. So we're excited, this is the first one, this is it, and it's only up from here. Class 1 demands the most experienced and steely-nerved powerboat racers. One driver and one throttle man who work as a team in perhaps one of the most physically and mentally challenging conditions of any sport. Cockpits are cramped and often very hot. The speeds are above 100 miles an hour over big sea swells and treacherous waves on open offshore waters, with the pilots taking a beating inside. There were five teams competing at Cocoa Beach with both fresh and familiar faces on hand. No doubt the most familiar being the legendary Steve Curtis, the most successful Class 1 pilot in history. Curtis' last Class 1 win came in 2019 when he partnered with James Shepard in Miss Geico. Honored by the Queen with an MBE, Steve Curtis is a truly exceptional racer with eight Class 1 World Championship titles to his name and holds the record for being the youngest Class 1 throttleman to ever win a title at the tender age of 21 in 1985. Curtis's old Miss Geico team is now rebranded as the number 21 Husky Racing Husky Chocolate Boat. He joins up with driver Britt Lilly for the race off Cocoa Beach. Well, I've got, um, today I've got Britt Lilly, he's a fantastic driver, second generation. You know, Britt was born in a boat, so he's a you know, fantastic driver, natural driver. And um, then I've got Travis Pastrama, who's just a lunatic um, and just will, you know, he doesn't care. You can push it as hard as you like. What happens, happens. So I've got two very good drivers. We've got Travis after this race um, and probably for the rest of the season. It'd be nice to knock up the, my ninth title. So, um, yeah, that's what we're going for. You know, we've got a fantastic team, good bunch of guys. Another multiple Class 1 champion is Miles Jennings of the UK a five-time world and 12-time British champion who has been racing since the 1970s. 
One of Jennings' most memorable wins in Class 1 came in Race 2 in Terracina, Italy in 2013, where he won with driver Alfredo Amato in Fendi 8. Driver Miles Jennings shares the cockpit with 27-year-old throttleman Alex Pratt, founder and face of Good Boy Vodka in the 345 Racing's ex-insurance boat. Uh, I'm Alex Pratt and I throttle for uh, boat 345 and uh, we just showed up here at the races and uh, we're excited to get started. We practiced yesterday, all went pretty good um, and uh, we're going to train again tomorrow and uh, kind of get the boat dialed in the rest of the way. We only met last week. Yeah, uh, met on so Tuesday and yeah. we're going 140 miles an hour yesterday together. <laughs> and no screaming or fist pumping yet, so we're good. <laughs> yeah, that's great though. Alex has had a lot of time in uh, not necessarily we're racing bikes before, but obviously he has uh, a lot of big boats as well, fast boats, turbines and so on. So he's pretty familiar with these kind of things. So he's just fitting straight in with this, which is great. So um, yep, yeah, I think it's going to work really well as a team. There are not one, but two experienced racers for Triple Two Offshore Australia. The legendary Italian throttleman with countless titles and podiums to his name, Giovanni Carpitella, and veteran Australian driver Darren Nicholson. A pair with a combined experience of almost a century, and they were sure to be a force to be reckoned with come race day. We started our new program here in the US in 2019 with this boat. Uh, we do all the championship here, and we finished second just for one point, but anyway, it was good, it was a very nice experience. We've got uh, new partners, Australian Navy, um, so that's good, but it's the same noise in the back. The Mercury's 1100, Spanish, which are excellent, and uh, it's really just tweaking those little things now to make sure we don't have too many bugs. We've been laid up for two and a half years, uh, and it'll probably be a 20 cent part that's having a holiday. Triple Two Offshore were second in the 2019 championship by one point and hungry for a win here. Racing an MTI boat was number 16 JBS Racing. The All-American team that boasts Michael Stancombe on throttle and Jeff Stevenson behind the wheel. I started about 10 years ago when I sold all my turbine um, stuff and we started, came up with this idea with the more cylinders, um, the same big power but less power per cylinder to make it more reliable, less fatigue, less heat, less wear. Jeff and I became friends and acquaintances back in the Donzi days. Just seemed to gel really well together. Had a good time, there's a lot of smiles in the cockpit and learning the boat, and learning each other. and. We got a shot, yeah, we're the underdog. We don't have experience of running class one like Steve Curtis or, or Miles Jennings, but uh, we have our own talent. We're born and bred and uh, watch out. There's a couple talented guys coming up after everybody. Rounding out the field is number 77, Lucas Oil Satcom Direct E3, which boasts a wealth of experience with British ace Nigel Hook on throttle alongside American Jay Johnson as driver, trading in their V-hull from 2019 for a catamaran this season in their Mystic-built boat. The catamaran's very different than the V-bottom, uh, but we're still getting used to it. Uh, but they're both amazing. It just depends on the water. It's nice having both. We can pick and choose which one we want to run. So no, we're, we're, this, is a, this is a perfect venue to kick it off. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's be our first seasonal race, you could say, um, in the uh, in this in this catamaran, the 77 Lucas Oil. We call it J Hook. J Hook. Hook. The big news in Class One is the use of twin turbocharged 9 litre 1,100 horsepower Mercury V8 engines, which are expected to add a level of reliability whilst also cutting down costs. The new engines have been adopted by all teams in Class One, with the exception of JBS Racing. The circuit for Thunder on Cocoa Beach runs along the shore which gives fans the opportunity to experience the thrill of seeing these boats up close along the entire circuit. It's a seven and a half mile lap with a three and a half mile straightway and it's sort of quarter mile in each of the turns. Um, and a slight dog leg on the outward leg running in a clockwise direction. So it'd be great for the fans to watch. Um, 
and a good fun race for us as well. You know, it should be some fast, exciting racing. Uh, Cocoa Beach here always throws in a few surprises. Uh, conditions are never flat, even when they say it's calm. They're always, you know, the Gulf Stream is so close here that it gives an underlying swell, uh, which is always difficult to predict and work with. So, uh, you know, getting the right setup is always quite difficult here. Local organizers put on a great show before race day for fans and teams alike. first Class 1 race of the 2022 season was underway. Teams worked on gear and prop setups right to the last few minutes before the race as they assessed changing water and weather conditions. The pole position lineup was determined by a random draw. JBS Racing drew the coveted top spot. 77 Lucas Oil Boat drew P2 on the starting lineup. You know, go as fast as we can, get the check and flag before someone else does. That's the strategy. We'll see, you know, it's, it's hard to tell what the conditions are going to be. It seems to be getting a little lighter now, right? It was uh, roughed up a little bit this morning, but having watched the last race, seems like it's laying down a little bit. So hopefully we've got the right prop choice. We'll, uh, we'll see very shortly. The 345 Racing X Insurance team were working on their drive shaft in the morning, hustling to get their boat ready in time. Their first ever outing, the new pairing of Miles Jennings and Alex Pratt were keen to get out on the water and make a mark in the first race of the year. We drew third on the pole, so we're right in the middle. So we've got to make sure we don't get squeezed at the start and uh, try and get to the first turn first. Let's see how we get on. Yeah, that's the plan. We got some aggressive gearing, so we want to get up front. To the left of X Insurance would be Husky Racing. Yeah, we're um, right on the outside, so we got <coughs> two, two, twos outside us. So yeah, it's not great, but you know, it's a rough race, so it doesn't matter so much in these conditions. So we're just going to get in, fill it all out, see how everything else, is, how everyone else is running, and then so, you know, we've got eight laps out there, so we, you know, probably look at doing something on lap four or five. On the very outside, with perhaps the toughest starting position, was Triple Two Offshore Australia, with a tough start ahead of them. We started for the last. We dropped the, the last number of the grid, so we are the last. It's always something to do hard, you know? As drivers entered their cockpits and finished final preparations, teams also had a chance to gauge the conditions during the Superstock race that preceded Class 1 to get a sense of what was in store for them on the circuit that is notoriously rough and unforgiving. So bad, and it's like bang, 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 three in a row, you know? Pain, just pure pain. Race time as the boats made their way from the wet pits and out into the circuit for the eight lap race on the 7.5 mile circuit for a total racing distance of 60 miles. Crowds lined the shores in anticipation of the first UIM APBA Class 1 World Championship race of 2022 as drivers and throttlemen got their first taste of the challenge ahead as they went into their parade lap to greet crowds, familiarize themselves with the course, warm their engines and get some speed into the rolling start of Cocoa Beach. But that does not sound or look good for 345 Racing as X Insurance boat slows and then stops on its way out into the circuit. It looks like they won't make it into the race. After the parade lap, the boats line up for the start. As soon as they pass the start-finish line, the race will be on. JBS in pole position has the inside lane advantage. Great luck of the draw, but can they hold on? Boats lining up, seconds to go before the green flag. Green flag and the race begins. The boats floor it. 2,200 horsepower in a drag race to the commitment boy. 
Triple two, Offshore Australia may have jumped the start, which may mean they'll receive a 30-second post-race penalty. With X Insurance unable to start, the reduced fleet of four boats pound through the waves on the long beach straightaway for the first of eight laps. 21 Husky Racing is trailing as Triple Two Offshore Australia charge ahead to lead the field from the get-go. Behind Nicholson and Carpitella in the lead boat is Husky Chocolate in second, with a battle for third between the number 16 JBS Racing and number 77 Lucas Oil Satcom Direct E3. And we can see from that beach shot the lead that Triple Two Offshore Australia has opened with Husky Racing. Nicholson and Carpitella going hard and fast from the start, but keep in mind the post-race 30-second penalty they might have incurred. Looking for the JBS Racing on board, Nigel Hook and Jay Johnson of Lucas Oil are pulling away in third as Jeff Stevenson and Michael Stancombe in the JBS boat trail in fourth. But the team to catch now is Giovanni Carpitella and Darren Nicholson in the lead boat, Triple Two Offshore Australia, as they thunder down the circuit with crowds watching on from Coco Beach. And as we watch on from the front on board, Triple Two Offshore Australia are first to the commitment boy, the first turn of this race. But it's a big turn and Triple Two Offshore Australia is on the outside as Steve Curtis and Britt Lilly of Husky Racing take advantage to close the gap and see if they can't sneak through on the inside. But Carpitella and Nicholson hold off the Husky Challenge, holding on to their lead as they round the turn and enter the eastern straightaway to do the dogleg turn on the other end of the circuit. 77 Lucas Oil is in third position. Hook and Johnson get round the turn without any hiccups, followed by 16 JBS Racing in fourth. It's a very good start for the Husky pairing, which is only temporary. Britt Lilly only in the seat for this first race. But they're working together well as a team, and Lilly had actually raced in the stock V earlier, jumping out of one boat and into the other. Meanwhile, out in the lead, look at that speed on Triple Two Offshore Australia as Nicholson and Carpitella take full command of the race. A very experienced team who have seen and raced it all, and they are masterfully negotiating these conditions and this circuit. Eastern straightaway behind them, Triple Two Offshore Australia approaches the dogleg and the yellow right-hander. The conditions shift depending on the direction of the boats. Drivers negotiating the waves from every direction on this circuit, constantly adapting. But the heavier and longer Class 1 boats are certainly having a better and easier time of it than the lighter stock and super stock boats that preceded them. And just look at what those waves and bumps feel like in the cockpit. Drivers really getting a beat down lap after lap, very rough on the body at these speeds. Lucas Oil Satcom Direct E3 in third, going strong with their 2011 built Mystic Catamaran that is negotiating these conditions nice and smoothly with its 52 foot length hull. JBS only have a 42 foot boat, one of the shortest in this field, and they take a heavier pounding in the waves. Triple Two Offshore Australia is going from strength to strength as they open their lead further seemingly relishing these rough conditions and thriving out on the open waters as they no doubt keep one eye on Husky Chocolate behind them in lap two. While Steve Curtis is known to bide his time and get a few laps in before pushing hard, the gap here between Husky and Offshore Australia has more to do with the excellent racing so far and pace of Carpitella and Nicholson than it has to do with any strategy on Husky Racing's part. Lucas Oil Satcom Direct E3 in third going strong with their 2011 built Mystic Catamaran that is negotiating these conditions nice and smoothly with its 45 foot length hull, longer than all but the Husky Racing Victory hull at 47 feet in length which makes for extra stability in these rough conditions. But Lucas Oil has a problem, they slow and then grind to a halt trying to restart but having no luck. What a shame for them as the race comes to a premature end for Nigel Hook 
and Jay Johnson as JBS Racing glides past into third position. Out in the lead, the boats come around the bend with Husky Racing managing to keep a check on the front runners Triple Two Offshore Australia, keeping them in their sights with a 15 second gap between the two boats. But Curtis and Lily appears to be upping the speed now on the straightaways as they build momentum and rhythm in the middle portion of the race. In third place, JBS has a lot of catching up to do with Mike Stancombe and Jeff Stevenson 75 seconds off the pace. Great racing from Nicholson driving the Triple Two Offshore Australia boat. The Queensland Australia native is actually an avid and multi-race winning competitive sailor, but he's since traded the sails for V8 engines winning multiple races throughout his career, including the Australian national title, the historic Venice to Monte Carlo Lion of the Sea Race, X-Cats and two Class 1 races in Europe and the Middle East. The halfway mark as the reduced fleet of three boats enter lap four. And Husky Racing's Curtis and Lily try to stay in touch with the leaders, looking for a chance to make their attack. But so far, Carpitella and Nicholson have been running an impeccable race to hold off the Husky chocolate boat. Triple Two Offshore Australia has opened such a gap with JBS Racing that they are about to lap them as they approach the turn. But the Triple Two boat finds the going rough, taking a bit of air and a big hit on that rough turn as they enter the next straightaway. Disaster for Triple Two Offshore Australia. They've come to a complete standstill floating on the waves. What a shame for them as they break down and are out of the race. Husky Racing in the lead now and it's just a two horse race with JBS far behind the leading boat of Curtis and Lily. The gap is big enough that the Husky Chocolate boat is about to lap JBS. But JBS is at least still in the race and on course for a runner up finish as Husky laps JBS and merely has to close out the few remaining laps, a dejected and broken-hearted Darren Nicholson and Giovanni Carpitella stand on their hull, ruining what might have been, waiting to get towed back to shore. The laps wind down, no change in positions, as Husky Racing, Husky Chocolate, Steve Curtis and Britt Lilly are the winners of Thunder on Cocoa Beach, as they start the new season with a convincing win. Curtis on course for a record ninth Class 1 world title. Great result too for JBS Racing. Husky are the winners with 20 points in the overall standing. JBS second with 15 and Triple Two Offshore Australia's Giovanni Carpitella and Darren Nicholson can take consolation in third place and 12 points on the board. Tough out there. <laughs> it was a little tough. <laughs> so, uh, like when I'm listening, yeah. The, the, yeah sound yeah. of the boat cracking and creaking oh. every time it lands it's like it amplifies <laughs> glad to be the hell out of that <laughs> got that one out yeah. uh yeah i mean we couldn't even get on plane uh, i think we broke a drive shaft or something maybe it just uh almost no power and then uh one of the shafts broke and we heard it so we just we stopped right away so um it was it was our it was our uh, port side yeah yeah must not have been fixed all the way, maybe, or some type of issue that continued. So, yeah, it's a shame, but I guess that's boating, right? Pretty good down the water. We, um, we found out afterwards, actually, the 2 2 jumped the start, so they got a 30-second penalty, which was going to be nice to know halfway through the race. Wow. And to push the hard, so, but, um, yeah, I don't know if we'd have got by them, like I said before, but we ran good and, you know, the guys did a fantastic job keeping the, you know, mechanically, the boat was all set up, didn't miss a beat, so we were super happy. Yeah, well, it was, uh, we started in the uh, stock V class with a win and uh, win with, with Steve and Husky, that's uh, been something I've been dreaming about for a long time, so it's, uh, it's a dream come true and so blessed to be here. It's a day, we finished. But to come first, first you've got to finish, so unfortunately, yeah, as Subani was said, we were coming first, and uh, then we had a breakdown, so. This is a race, you know, sometimes it's uh, for 10 euro pieces, sometimes it's for a big one, but it's a racing. 
It's a, uh, you know, it's a dream come true. Uh, never in my 55 years, uh, in 35 years of racing offshore, that I thought I would be racing against uh, the class one gentlemen from all over the country and UIM, and then to be here on the podium with Jeff is just spectacular. It's a dream got, come true. I thank God every day for this opportunity I have, and uh, being with Jeff is like having a little brother. <laughs> Right now. <laughs> and that concludes an exciting return to international class one racing. See you in Sarasota for the next round of the 2022 UIM APBA class one world powerboat championship.